hello and welcome to the channel go ahead hit the like hit the share subscribe if you haven't already isn't it interesting as we watch all these individuals continue to flourish as they have waged all these allegations and use other individual stories to position themselves in better lifestyles and they don't mind piggybacking off of other people's career, slandering other people's characters, and implicating other people in their storylines in order to sell their narratives to certain individuals. Now, if you recall, Cheryl Mack came out here with a story about a girl named Precious Way, and they positioned her to be next to Robert Kelly as Cheryl Mack tried to position herself to be her manager. But somehow, the prosecutors presented how Robert Kelly was recruiting these girls, and we should ignore the obvious reason some keep quiet. It's obvious that a lot of these people and their personal vendettas against this man came out and opened the door for a whole lot of fraudulent individuals to come out and let these people who have been exploiting and embezzling money in this whole situation continue to play on fans and supporters emotions meanwhile prosecutors are eating up all the narratives that have been put out here in these so-called documentaries and staged events on social media if you don't think they're fully aware that people bloggers in particular watch social media and document certain actions that is where a lot of people are confused and how they have been attaching themselves to Aaliyah's legacy from the beginning of this whole surviving R. Kelly saga and it's very similar to a lot of artists who have been through the same faith yet even in this trial no one will acknowledge how these documents are clearly a farce and anybody could have produced them but that doesn't change the fact that they could not prove an official ceremony took place and nobody wants to ask the real questions however we continue to let all these individuals continue to profit off of both of these legacies I am a lover of music of all of many genres and it was difficult for me to say okay I gotta separate this yeah this is just not right so Aaliyah was probably when I kind of said this is not okay and it was the fact that she had been rumored to have had had an abortion by him which was a lie as the tour manager then came and testified that he did not believe Aaliyah was pregnant but this was the first red flag as these geniuses couldn't even figure out if they wanted to say they believe she had an abortion or if they believe there's some love child out here that is Robert Kelly's and Aaliyah's that he had you know falsified her birth certificate to get to marry her illegally and at the time she was 15 years old and at least if you gonna recite a story, you should get the facts straight. And never once did anybody say that a birth certificate was altered. But you did have Demetrius Smith testify that he bribed an official, got a fake ID, and this is what Robert Kelly was convicted of. No baby and none of this other fugazi ass bullshit. You know, I'm a few years older than Aaliyah, and I remember, you know, being a teenager and dealing with much older men who had no business even looking at me as anything but a child so everybody is supposed to take on how you feel and how you were treated as a child and bypass that with this specific case the woman herself denied the allegations as well as her family except for her janky ass uncle who's still to this day profiting off of this whole situation conveniently you know and needing to navigate that and to say whoa wait a minute this is not okay so i can understand how when the world is looking at you, speaking from Aaliyah's perspective, that um, it was very confusing for her. Mm. And I always just felt that his, you know, his presentation, his music 
you know, his music talked about. I mean, you know, Jim David Goddess is an amazing, you know, um, yeah. journalist. And, you know, yeah. he'll tell you that he but, is, yeah, yeah. he's a, yeah. He's a rock. He's a rock journalist. So he knows yeah. music, and is a great encyclopedia. And the one thing that he and I talked about a few years ago was that he or Kelly was telling us about his Expert. his behavior through his yeah. music. Because these people telling these stories were able to tap in on people's natural curiosity over all the rumors we've heard all these years. A lot of people did not catch on to the clear deceptive statements that these people made early on. So even if you weren't at R. Kelly's trial, you would know that the prosecutors built their case around Robert Kelly being the head of this enterprise while we heard all these people getting on these platforms trying to push their book deals and other side projects, implicating all these individuals, including themselves, by stating that they were basically trying to recruit these girls for their own agendas. But in the courtroom, they were able to switch that and point the finger at Robert Kelly considering he's the head of the brand. The government never once said that Robert Kelly was the sole person in the enterprise. So as I watched all these individuals emerge via social media, knowing that people were watching their accounts, it became blatantly obvious the things that we were seeing transpire and how all of these people, whether they went along with the narratives or whether they just decided to keep quiet, they began to come on up in the industry. And even these individuals who were implicated by these Jane Doe's were still following the lead people who narrated a lot of these stories. So when I hear people continue to harp on Robert Kelly's accountability and having all these janky ass people around him in the first place, well, having janky people around you does not give prosecutors and the government the right to manipulate laws. Having poor choices in women does not give people the right to bring women to you and then flip the narrative as though you're recruiting women when they're robbing you blind. Making poor financial decisions does not give people the right to extort you and use past allegations against you to keep running to mainstream media to fuel these narratives does not mean you're actually guilty of a crime. And last but not least, if these people could not see that all these individuals who made shady business ventures, who used these girls to cover up their misdeeds and bring their stories to the public, have manipulated all these stories in order to garner this conviction against Robert Kelly, should be equally as accountable as y'all would say that Robert Kelly is, especially when you see some of these accusers have never spoken publicly. So I'm titling this video a two-for-one special because all these janky-ass individuals were able to slander two icons for the price of one. And I guarantee you they won't see even a fraction of what these corporations have profited. Meanwhile, all the crabs on YouTube want to keep bickering about nonsense and we see why they get nowhere. Meanwhile, the managers who did participate in a lot of RICO type activity are still out here playing the manager roles, still out here exploiting their niece like Barry Hankerson, and still out here allowing other artists to latch on to these artists' legacies in order to build themselves back up. So it should be no surprise hearing all these artists name dropping Aaliyah and even being part of her new project.